Hey guys, I'm back today with another design team project for Queenie Company. I'm going to be using the Fright Fest kit. And here is the contents of the kit. You get a paper pack, acetate pieces, dyes, all the toppings you need. Here are some inspiration cards, sample cards, which is great. Um, here is the stamp set if you want to pause it or slow it down to read the sentiments. This kit is their largest, I believe I read which it definitely is, largest kit. So if you have gotten the Queenie Company kits before and they come in that little pl uh, plastic, it reminds me of like a zipper case, um, this one will not because it is such a large kit. You get a ton. So a ton. I, like, I can make probably 10 more cards. Each, um, d uh, you get three foam pieces with each die that makes sense so great amount of product for the cost and even when you run out of your foam pieces and acetate pieces you have these wonderful dies here I'm going to show you the toppings and then we'll get started on the 10 cards um, I make all shaker cards typically when I do my Queen and Company videos the 10 cards I try to make cards that aren't shaker cards just to give you some options kind of mix it up a little but I did this kit, I w it was so much fun playing with this kit. The cards came to me pretty quickly. Um, but every card I make, you could make a normal card. You would not have to make it a shaker card. So if you like a card you see that you want to replicate um, and you don't want to do a shaker, you can easily. That last topping I showed you was actually cats. It took me a second to realize what it was. <laughs> But it's like the cat doing the scaredy, scaredy cat pose. So here I'm just going to kind of show you how I put together my acetate pieces. I have the Boo foam. I punched out the middle. And I, here I am adding the acetate to it. I have removed one of the adhesive backings and adding the acetate. You can do this however you want. This is how I do it. Um, for the spider web, look for the point that is the um, furthest out. And that's how I lined it up. And once I find it, I just put my acetate piece down and it's good to go. So, starting on card one, I have die cut all my pieces. The little boot, which is stitched, you get a leg. And then you get like the little piece where the laces would go. So there's three pieces to the boot. And the first couple cards, I'm going to show you how I put all this together, but then I'm going to cut it out of the video so to keep the video under 30 minutes. Um, you guys get the idea. I will also be bringing in some other Queen & Company products, and I will everything extra I will have links below. So this is some of their sparkly string. Wrapped it around a few times. This die is a Your Next Stamp die. I don't know the exact name, but it's like... Um, it rips it looks like it's ripped paper and I really like that so after I do my voiceover I'm gonna watch this whole video again and make a list of all the other products I bring in just to make sure to have them listed for you because sometimes I forget um, this is the little toppings that are the cat and then I go ahead and add some stars I had a huge uh, some of the star it just dumped out whoops um, made a big old mess you know with anything sequins and stuff like that it can have a little bit of static so um, you know just take your time with these I had stars everywhere I went to my husband we own we have our own little room like he has his little music room and then I have my craft room and he was in his little room and I go in there and he looks at me and I'm like you know when someone looks at you weird and you're like what gosh what are you looking at <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what is on your forehead? And uh, it was a star from the kit. So anyway, <laughs> I'll probably still find them a week from later around my table. But so I use some of the, this is all, this pattern paper that I use is all in the kit. I love this little green and black striped pattern paper for the leg. It was like she was wearing some really cool tights or leggings, whatever you call them. So I used some glitter paper from my stash to cut out this piece. And I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. Okay. 
and then I go ahead, I pop this up to account for the, the sparkly string, adding some dimension. I didn't want there to be a bump right there if I adhered it flat. Go ahead and stamp out my sentiment on some pattern paper from the kit, which is the back side of the striped. Would a bad witch wear shoes this fabulous, I think it says? Really cute, and those sentiments are really cute. That is a full-size stamp set, too. It is six, a four-by-six stamp set. So you get some great Halloween sentiments. Here I'm bringing in some epoxy dots from Queen and & Company and going to use those to embellish it, embellish the card. The All the embellishments that Queen & Company sells is such a great, there's such a great variety in color. So I pulled them out and um, used them throughout the video. For card two, I've die cut out this uh, spider web. I used white cardstock. Here I'm adding my toppings really quick, again spilling some, can't get it straight. Usually I put my toppings in little cups but I so I don't have to worry about the baggie, but I didn't this time and it probably would be easier if you did have little cups to separate them like that. I am, this little thing, I am bringing different toppings in and this these aren't in the kit but I will link them below. Um, that I wanted to kind of fill in. I didn't want to run out of toppings before I was done with my 10 cards. Um, I've added my acetate, and then on top of my acetate piece, I am adding this spider web. Again, lining it up with that point that sticks out the most. This is, I believe, a paper studio from Hobby Lobby embossing folder that I had die cut out. It's a spider web. I'm using some of the paper twine from Queen & Company that I love so much. And go ahead and wrap that around there and tie a bow. Attach the bow with a glue dot. Um, I was going to say that Queen & Company, and I will link it below, Queen & Company does sell refill packs and refill toppings for this kit. So I'll link the kit and then I'll link everything you know separate if you want it just easier for you to find. I went ahead and stamped out my sentiment on white cardstock and cut it out with a scallop stitch die. These embellishments are called halos, and this is just a silver one. I thought it was pretty. Again, I don't use enough of their uh, embellishments. I have keep all the embellishments I have of theirs in a photo box, and I keep it in my closet, lack of room, and out of sight, out of mind. So I always make it a point at least to bring out the goods when I'm doing the kits because they're great. They have, Queen & Company has so much. It's a lot of fun. Went ahead and did my little boo die, added my little toppings, and then did my background. And again, all this paper is from the kit. I did not bring in any paper. This is a set of glitter washi tape. It's really pretty, and um, I've been wanting to use it, but then I never do. So I made sure to bring it out this time. This little, like, dripping blood, dripping liquid, it could be whatever you want, dripping slime. That's your next stamp die that I have yet to use. I forgot I had it until I was got into my Halloween series. So I wanted to use that. And here I'm just taking the glitter washi tape and finishing up those edges like I like to do if you've been here for a while. Go ahead and add this to my card base. And then add my little boo to my card. I am using Art Glitter Glue. Um, it's great stuff. <laughs> so here is an inner piece of a previous Queen & Company kit from the shaker pieces that you get. So definitely save those inner pieces. I wanted my sentiment to be as tall as my boo sentiment. So that worked out perfectly. These things are my favorite. Let me see, they're the rubber bubbles. Oh my gosh, I just could feel them and smush them. They're not smushy at all, but they're like a matte finish. And it kind of reminds me of that little candy that came on the sheet long, long ago like a little strip of paper. I don't know, but they're so cute. I bring those and use different colors a couple times in this video. 
So moving on to the next card, I've gone ahead and cut out the little tombstone, added my little toppings, and here I'm adding the other pieces. If you're unsure of what a die is, make sure you look at, you know, come back to this video because there are certain, like this piece, I wasn't sure what it was until I was like, oh, okay, this goes with the gray, um, the tombstone, it goes on the bottom. I used a star embossing folder. Again, I think it's Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby. And here I'm just showing you how I cut out the center of this pattern paper. This actually is my favorite paper from the pack and I don't want to waste any. So the center is going to be covered anyway, so you can just use a die or cut it with your scissors, doesn't matter. And cut out the center and save the center for another project. That star embossing piece is going to be covering that anyway, so why waste a whole sheet of paper? Go ahead and attach that down. I did the stars because I was like, oh, it's nighttime. You know, obviously tombstones, gravestones are outside. So I thought that went well. I have the Star Punch. Again, it's Paper Studio brand from Hobby Lobby. And I cut out a couple stars with some glitter cardstock from my stash and go ahead and adhere everything down. I've already heat embossed my sentiment with white embossing powder trimmed off the ends and then attached that. I added some dimension to that and I'm going to add some dimension to my stars and just pop those on there. Just give it a little sparkle. Don't forget your little punches or your little dies to add embellishments. You don't always need enamel dots or, or anything else. You can use what you have in your stash. Okay, for card five, I do not remember what this die is called, but I'm pretty sure it's Crafting Desert Diva's die. And I cut that out of black cardstock to create a scene. Uh, I think of pumpkins like this, little jack o lanterns I think of trick-or-treaters, especially, obviously, this one has a handle, so it's going to be full of candy. And um, I like the little kind of spooky neighborhood. Here I'm heat embossing, again, my sentiment. I had a little, I wanted to do orange, but my orange embossing powder, I don't know what the deal was. It was not working for me, so I had to just stick to my white. I'm going to trim that after I heat emboss it. Go ahead and adhere my little street scene down. This one would also go, to, go good with the tombstone, this little scene, because it has a little graveyard in it. Um, I was really bringing in a lot of stuff for my stash in this kit you know, dies and such. Because if you're making cards and you not want to make videos, you're going to bring in everything you have. And I really had a, a lot of fun with this kit doing that because I didn't limit myself. Yes, I used everything in the kit, but I was also able to play with stuff from my stash, which you may have. Or I may be showing you something that you really like and like to get. So I used some more of that sparkly ribbon or twine. It's more like twine. And wrapped it around. I tied a bow. The bow was so small. Um, I love this sparkly ribbon or twine, whatever you want to call it, but um, it's, for me, it's a little tricky to tie bows with, so I did that off camera and my bow came out way too small. <laughs> Go ahead and pop up the sentiment and adhere it down, and then I'll adhere this to my card base. And I'm adding tape to my card base because I didn't want to flip over my card since my pumpkin was on there. And there you go, really cute. For card six, I actually got this inspiration for this card off the website, um, Queenie Company's website. Someone, a designer had done a card with the coffin and they saved the centerpiece and kind of had it like it was opening. And I thought that was so cute. So here I am doing my little version of it. I go in and stamp the sentiment on the coffin and I heat it, I embossed, not heat embossed, but embossed with an embossing folder this piece. It's I, I don't know what it is, but just to give the card some texture from some orange cardstock in my stash. Again, use some yellow sparkly ribbon to wrap around. Go ahead and attach my little coffin, and then I attach the, again, an inner piece of the shaker foam 
pieces comes in handy for this because I wanted my little coffin lid to be the same height as my coffin. And so I just cut off a little strip right here and I will use that to adhere it down and it's nice and flush with the coffin. Go ahead and pop that down. And then here I'm going to add, what do I add? I add some, okay, I added a bow. Again, this can be tricky to tie a bow, but my bow looks a lot better than the other one. Just gotta work with it. So these are some purple rubber bubbles to go with the purple lining in the coffin. And that completes card six. For card seven, they had a little like potion bottle and here are all the die pieces I kind of have laid out. So I attached that piece to my little bottle. And then these black little pieces are the, um, the lid and then some little, it all goes on the top, which you'll see here. Um, I saw a card a designer did, and she made that like a, the top part portion, the very top, like a um, craft. So it looked like a cork bottle. It was so cute. I'm like, that's clever. I went ahead and cut um, the rounded strip in the center of the top portion in green just to kind of make it a little bit different. So that bubble die is from your next stamp as well. And I went ahead and used that to make it look like bubbles were coming out of the potion bottle. I have this green glitter cardstock from my stash. Go ahead and I just taped it. I wasn't gonna worry about trying to adhere it. Glitter cardstock can be a little tricky. I used a scallop die to cut out those two purple pieces. And I'm just gonna add that to the sides. This yellow piece I cut out, I really wish I used a stitch die. To me, it, and this is the reason why I'm adding the purple, to me it just was so plain just being cut out like normal. I, I needed some decorative piece to it. So I couldn't obviously run it through and die cut it with my little potion bottle on there. So I added the purple to kind of dress it up. Here I'm just layering some cardstock. I take some of that green strip of glitter paper, add that in the center. And then I do bring back that glitter washi tape that had a green one. It's not a perfect match, but you can't tell. It's, it's fine. Very little of this will be even, you'll be even, what am I trying to say? Very little of this will even, oh my gosh. You won't see much of this anyway. There we go. <laughs> Once I put the card together, very little peeks through there that's it see probably was totally pointless even doing that but whatever um the toppings the shaker bits i put in this card are from my uh stash i'll have them linked below i wanted to do green to match the green bubbles um so i'll have those linked below these toppings oh no i don't oh yeah these these are halos again no they're lollipops i don't have them in front of me um Lollipop, Lollipops, I believe is the name. So for card eight, I wanted to do two witches' feet. Um, again, I saw this online and found inspiration from that. Um, if you go to Queen and Company's website, she has, um, there are inspiration cards and the two-footed witch <laughs> is one of them. So here I'm kind of showing me taking apart this because I put all my acetate pieces together off camera before I started so when I got to making videos they were good to go but if you want to do this you have to do everything backwards so you have die cutting you need to die cut backwards or you know um it's all opposite is what I'm trying to say hopefully it makes sense and you get what I'm trying to say so I had to rip the paper off, rip the acetate, take out the little contents, die cut everything backwards um, in order for it to fit properly. So I put my witch's feet together, which you can see on the right off camera. And here I'm just adding my pieces of pattern paper. I used a rectangle scallop die for that. And then here are my feet, just adorable. 
And you can tell the black part of where the laces are, how different they look. Because the one on the left was cut differently, obviously. So um, I'm going to go ahead and trim up the little legs. You can put them together so you can trim them evenly. The one on the right is still a little too high, but I do fix that. So these are metallic bubbles, and I add those to where the laces go. And again, there's a card. If you click on the link and you look at some of the sample cards, there's a card like this um, that's listed that I saw, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do one of those. Go ahead and pop if the shoe fits, and that completes that card. That one was one of my favorite cards. This one's pretty cool too. So I really liked the spider web. And I liked it in white against the darker colors. So I cut out three of them. And originally this was not going to be a shaker card. I was just going to do the spider webs, pop on a sentiment, and be done. But that was too plain for me. So I'm doing the spider webs. I'll trim it up. And then I attach it to my card base. And then I take the boo shaker pieces and I use that as my sentiment. I thought I would try something different and use a vellum as the backing instead of a pattern paper or a solid paper. I thought this would be pretty cool. So once I adhere it to my card base you can still see a little bit through. You can see the spider webs a little bit through the vellum which I really like that look. And so now I'm adding halos which really complement the white and then the silver boo paper that I used. And I'm adding some rubber bubbles. That glimmer paper, glitter paper, is from my stash. Just so you guys know. For the final card, I wanted to make a couple more pumpkins. So here I'm attaching some of the green cardstock to the bottom. I used a scallop die to cut this piece of cardstock out, or um, pattern paper. I really like this pattern as well. It's kind of a collage of all the images. Pumpkins, the witch's hat, a moon, the boo, the coffin. And here I've already had put my pumpkin pieces together. Um, if you noticed in the unboxing, there were two little shaker pieces, toppings, that were two different types of pumpkins. So I used one type of pumpkin in one and then the other type of pumpkin in the other. To me, one on the left, those little uh, shaker bits are more like a pumpkin and then the one on the right is like a jack-o'-lantern. Even though they both have faces, but you get what I mean if you have the kit. <laughs> go ahead and attach. Finish attaching the faces and then I decided to go ahead and cut out another tombstone. Here I'm taking my sticker maker and I cut out a tombstone with vellum and I kept the centerpiece. And I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment on the centerpiece. So I take this and attach it to a black centerpiece of the tombstone just to give it some more stability. And I ran it through my sticker maker so you wouldn't see the adhesive as much as you would if you used a glue dot or a wet adhesive. I'm going to heat emboss that in white. And as always, when you're heating vellum, let your heat gun warm up and then quickly go over it. Once you see it's melted, move on. Otherwise, you will burn your embossing powder. Go ahead and or burn your vellum, I'm sorry. Go ahead and attach that, and that's a perfect example of how you can use this kit without making shakers, the little tombstone. So don't think that, oh, once I'm done with my shaker bits, uh, the, the kit's useless. No, you can get a lot of use out of this. It's really cute. Go ahead and pop my sentiment up and adhere that to my card base. And then here I bring in some orange rubber bubbles and add those. And then that will complete the final card. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love this kit. This is probably my favorite kit so far by Queen & Company. Um, it was a lot of fun putting these cards together. 
and I didn't feel like I had to go online to search out some layouts and designs and stuff to kind of get my my creative juices flowing. I, these all just kind of came to me and and it was a lot of fun. So all links to everything will be listed below. If you're interested in a kit, I would grab one while you can. Um, I know with popular kits, they go out of stock. And Wendy at Queen of Company is really good about bringing them back in stock. But if you're like me, when it's out of stock, the waiting is the worst part. So if you are interested in this kit, definitely go check that out. The link will be below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know what your favorite card was. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.